It's time to go. That's what many skilled South Africans are saying as the country faces a myriad of challenges for high unemployment, rising crime and decaying public services. With the job offer awaiting him in New Zealand, this 28-year-old said it was a no-brainer for him and his wife to pack their bags. Basically, if you're in the middle class, you have enough money to live in your house, move in your car, to your work, come back in your car, to your, to your home, or if you want to go to the mall, in your car to the mall, so you live in this bubble, you don't actually leave your car, you afraid to walk on the street. Why? In the event that, okay, I might get robbed, I might get kidnapped, my wife might get in trouble. First National Bank economists have said that one in five houses being sold in the country ahead of the coronavirus pandemic were linked to emigration. While the pandemic halted that movement, sales are slowly returning. Another marker is the disappointing results of a tax on the wealthiest earners imposed more than five years ago. We didn't collect as much as we thought we would, right? And the number of people in that tax bracket hasn't grown that much, even with the kind of inflation um, that, um, that, um, that, that we are experiencing. So it does tell you that something really is happening um, in that top bracket. New World Wealth, a South African wealth intelligence firm, issued a report earlier this year on the migration of high net individuals worth over $1 million. Researchers say while outflows can be seen in other emerging markets, it is a concern for South Africa's economy. I think if it's an entrepreneur, perhaps, or someone who's uh, looking to set up a, a big business uh, or expand a business and then he's moving, then it's obviously more of an issue. I think high net worths are often the first to move because they have the means to move. Uh, but at the same time, middle class will often follow. The potential loss of tax revenue is concerning as the country explores the creation of a basic income grant to support more people earning low and middle income. About half the country's nearly 60 million people live below the poverty line. Revenue Services Commissioner Edward Kieswetter rejected the issue, telling the local press last month that emigration was having a negligible impact on tax collection. Still, only 9% of the population pays income tax, which accounts for 40% of all tax revenue, according to accounting firm Ernst & Young. And economists warn against raising taxes on that small base. We think that we are, if not at the peak, if not um, at, at an inflection point where if you try to increase taxes, you collect lower and lower revenues. If we are not there already, you are very, very close um, to being there. So it becomes detrimental to increase taxes um, in that environment. So Instead, he says job creation is the best way to increase revenues. More than 33% of South Africans are unemployed, and youth are worse affected. Mayed says while many people around him have discussed seeking greener pastures, it's often those younger than him making the leap. The brain drain is a real thing. Um, well, actually, it's funny because my younger brother, he's just, he's just done studying now. All of his friends that are completing their degrees, they all have contracts signed with uh, firms in the UK. So they're all leaving straight out of campus. While the impact of emigration is hard to measure for the country as a whole, the communities they leave behind will feel their absence. Linda Giftash for VOA News, Johannesburg.